My name is Dane Wigington. I'm the lead researcher and administration for a website called geoengineeringwatch.org. The purpose of our site is to educate people on the subject of geoengineering, something that too few know about and something that literally holds life on, on the planet in balance. Geoengineering is weather modification on a global scale. Many refer to this as chemtrails. This aircraft you see spraying right now is a KC-10 and that the uh, nozzles are visible. You see inside the circles, and you can see them shutting on and off in a moment as you watch this tape roll. And the dispute as to whether or not these programs are going on is really a moot point. We have more than enough data. We have actual footage, as you're seeing now, to show that these tankers are indeed spraying at in altitude. The materials we see showing up on the ground are the exact materials named in numerous geoengineering patents, as many as 150 patents. So. At this point, the, the notion that these programs are not going on is, is simply uh, denial. Skies like this, many have grown to think are natural, but they're anything but. And we've seen this for so long now, and it's been ramped up at, at such a steady pace that people have simply become used to skies like this. Anybody who thinks grid patterns like this are natural should recheck their reality. This is anything but natural. We, we seldom see blue skies anymore. Skies like this have all too often become the norm. Unfortunately, most people don't even look up. I think at times you could start the sky on fire, nobody would notice. More grid patterns. I mean, these are very symmetrical patterns. It's exactly what geoengineering patents call for, solar obscuration to block the sun with toxic metal particulates. And unfortunately, with geoengineers, they don't seem to take the consequences into account. They're, yep, the planet is like a giant physics lab for them and they, they seem to not be able to look outside that bubble. These are, these are what many of our fir trees look like in the forest now. And in fact, as a, one of our audience brought in, the fir trees have gone to cone, as you see here, which means they're in a stress response. They think they're going to die. They're trying to uh, preserve their DNA. This is uh, halos around the sun. We see often as the atmosphere is filled with particulates, important to understand, just because you don't see trails from horizon to horizon does not mean you're not breathing particulates. We seldom see blue skies anymore. They're, they're a, a uh, silvery white color, especially in the mornings or the afternoons. If you look to the east or to the west and you block the sun with something, you can see the air is very silvery white. This is indicative of an atmosphere saturated with particulates. These particulates create drought. This is a very known and not disputed effect of geoengineering. As you saturate the atmosphere with particulates, you diminish rain. People need to get this through their head. This is not about seeding to increase rain. This is about creating artificial clouds, which reduces rain. When you block the sun, you block evaporation. You block light photons, which uh, diminishes uh, the, the ability for the sun to knock molecules loose and create evac evaporation. So what we get is protracted drought in some areas and deluge in others, exactly what we have in the continental US right now. We see more and more reservoirs like this that are dry or going dry. Again, exactly what we would expect with geoengineering, exactly what we have. Putting the wrench on planet Earth. This is the epitome of human insanity, to think that they could alter and control these very complex natural systems is insanity of the first order. More skies that we become used to, this high level, toxic, artificial, Stratocirrus. These are not natural stratocirrus. Sky should be blue, clouds should be white. Meteorologists, for the most part, know this is going on. We were told by a Fox affiliate meteorologist that they're being taken into rooms and told not to discuss this issue on air. This is, this is heavy wet snow. Now, this is a new term by Weather Channel to describe the artificially nucleated snow. Yes, they are nucleating snowstorms artificially and chemically. This creates a snow that's like concrete, collapses trees, collapses power lines, does horrific damage. Again, uh, consequences for tampering with nature. Now, this shows that the US military, this is from the top naval officer, considers climate change the greatest national security threat. And if anybody thinks the DOD is not involved with these programs, they have not done any investigation. Bottom line is the data is there for anybody who wants to look. Another document, Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative. Documents like this abound for anybody who takes the time to look. This discusses the international governance of solar geoengineering amongst the elites. Not that we would have any choice of who dumps whatever into our skies or controls our weather because we're not a part of the equation. This is, this is amongst the government elites to discuss how they will control our weather. Geoengineering governance, another such document. Dis discussion from the global elite as to how they will control our weather. No say for us. 
Full spectrum dominance. This is a military term for a, stire, a desired objective to control all aspects strategically, including the weather. The weather is, is, is known as a force multiplier with the US military. Geoengineering governance and technology. This document was from January 2nd of this year. It's 40 pages long, can be found online, can be found on our site, outlines the full governance proposals for geoengineering because of course when you mess with part of the system, you mess with the entire system. And, and again, the global power structure is discussing this amongst themselves. The public does not have any input to this equation. Weather as a force multiplier, a term I mentioned a minute ago, owning the weather in 2025. This is a stated US military objective, to own the weather in 2025. And I do not mean to imply that the US military is the only player in this game. We have China and Russia on the other end of the fence. And at this point, it's a tug of war with the atmosphere. And the American public appears to be one of the victims in, in this uh, equation. And it appears that there are other internal objectives against the American people to control food supplies, control water supplies, control water rights, so forth. Now, as I said before the start of this show, semantics are very, very important. The terminology you use to convince people of th this issue being valid is important. If you Google chemtrail, you find conspiracy theory, first thing that comes up, massive Wikipedia definition, and they guard this definition very carefully, by the way. I've had scientists who have contacted me who have tried to alter this definition and point out that this is a layman's term for geoengineering. Within five minutes, it's changed back. They watch, they watch this definition like a hawk. Again, anybody who thinks this is commercial traffic may be confused about where they're going. Uh, they, should, they should think again. I mean, this, is, this has nothing to do with commercial traffic. If you Google geoengineering, this is the front page you find. Our site is the second item on that page. We're all science, no advertising, no politics. Geoengineering is, is hard science, and if people pursue that term, they'll find credible data. Semantics matter. This is a, this is a patent. This means that the person who owns this patent has the sole right to carry on this program. This is called stratospheric wells box seeding for reduction of global warming. This describes expressly the payload disbursement of aluminum nanoparticles into the atmosphere. So these patents exist, about 150 of them, describing the intent of blocking the sun by spraying these aerosols into the atmosphere. Global warming and global dimming. Global dimming is something people should be familiar with as well. As of the latest reports, 22% of the sun's direct rays no longer reach the surface of the planet. They're being blocked. The planet is literally encased in a cocoon of toxic metals. Yes, pollution is a part of this problem, but we believe a small part in comparison to the geoengineering dispersed aerosols. So uh, as they block the sun, uh, the, the list of consequences is horrific, one of which is vitamin D deficiency, of which 98% of the US population is now deficient in vitamin D. The host of diseases and ailments that ensue from that is horrific, not to mention the fact that we are breathing these particulates. So photosynthesis for plants, another issue. Uh, you, you can't block the source of life on planet Earth without consequence. These are the skies that many have become used to. These are, that is 100% aerosols in that photo. That is not stratosphere. Scientists seek to legitimize geoengineering while acknowledging its catastrophic effects. Again, the scientists, and, and many of which I know, are little concerned with the consequences of their experiments. They're just, uh, they look at the planet as a giant physics lab for them to carry out their little operations. Obama, Obama's geoengineering program, Poison from the Sky. Obama's science advisor, John Holdren, strong advocate for these programs. Uh, they, the Obama administration, in fact, since he has taken office, these programs have been ramped up yet again. They go back a long way, but they're going for broke now. It appears that they're doubling down on the damage they've already done. It's like Corexit in the Gulf of Mexico. What did they do? Did they try to acknowledge the mess in the Gulf of Mexico, the oil spill? No, they tried to hide it with a chemical disbursement called Corexit, which by some reports made the toxicity in that region 52 times greater, but they don't care. The goal is to hide the damage they've done, hide the crimes already committed. Again, more clearly unnatural traffic in the air. What are we dealing with? So many people ask this question, why would they do this? If they're doing it to themselves, why would they do it? First and foremost, we're not dealing with sanity. Jack Nicholson puts a good face on that, I think. And uh, we can look back and see that anybody who would detonate 1,800 nuclear bombs on planet Earth, which contaminated all life forms on Earth, is not, is not sane in any way, shape, or form. And the definition of clinical insanity uh, and, and we are talking about 4% of the population, by the way, the psychopathic. They have no consciousness of the comprehension, or, or no comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. So that, that's something that must be considered. Has any such testing gone on that we know about? Absolutely. 
every day there's more data coming out about not other governments alone, but our government testing on its own people, its own soldiers. And, and again, our military is full of very, very dedicated, honorable people, full of them. But there are scientists and there are some in power that use such dedicated and honorable people as, as pawns in this equation. This is one such test. Deadly chemical sprays on American cities. This is well documented. People can, can find any of this data online. Insane nuclear explosions, again, same people don't blow off 1,800 nuclear bombs. I think we know they work after maybe a few dozen, and, and we could stop at that point and not build enough to exterminate life on Earth 12,000 times over. That's how much nuclear weapon we have. So it's important to remember people who use an excuse that, well, this can't be happening because they wouldn't do it to themselves, that excuse doesn't hold water. World eternally contaminated by depleted uranium. This is just one more example of this insanity. Depleted uranium is used in the ammunition now for the NATO countries. It's causing horrific damage. Many remember Gulf War syndrome. Uh, this is related to depleted uranium. Again, no concern for the consequences. Weather warfare. This is going on right now. We appear to have China and Russia on one side of the fence, the NATO countries on the other. The atmosphere has become a battlefield, a very uh, covert battlefield with all life on Earth at stake. Mechanics airline executives and doctors talk about Project Cloverleaf. Many ask, are there just military tankers in these programs or is there commercial aircraft? In fact, with GPS tracking, commercial aircraft have been identified from the ground, leaving particulate trails. Um, and Project Cloverleaf appears to be the outline for this. It makes sense. It's a way of uh, artificially stimulating the economy, keeping non-profitable airlines in the air and flying. We don't implicate pilots, airline personnel, at all in this, in the sense that these programs based on the patents for powder contrail generators and so forth, part of the spraying apparatus, automated. We don't believe pilots have anything to do with the actual operation of these systems. Blue skies as they used to look, as they should look. Skies again as they look now. Important that people start to look up. Our atmosphere is as thin as a layer of paint on a basketball. It doesn't take that much to damage it. No atmosphere, no life. Kim Trail's nano aluminum and neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental effects. Russell Blaylock, MD. Russell Blaylock is an internationally recognized neuroscientist, award-winning neuroscientist, speaking on the record about the lethality of these programs. Nanoparticulate size, so small they are taken through the lung lining straight into the bloodstream where they adhere to cell receptors like a plaque. They're bioavailable, they build up in the body, causing a vast array of diseases and ailments. To give an idea of the size of these particles, if you see the little blue dots on that hair, those are micron-sized particles. We're talking about particles that are a thousand times smaller than those in relation to a human hair. It's inconceivably small. Again, Russell Blaylock warning about the ailments with, related to these atmospheric spraying programs. Alzheimer's now, as of April of this year, one in three seniors in the U.S. dies with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Doesn't mean dies from it, but dies with it. So, and it's not either a black or white situation. Just because you're not diagnosed with this doesn't mean that you're not on your way to that point. There's a whole lot of in-between. So there's no question that all of us have had our uh, neurological system affected. We're all breathing this stuff. It's inside all our systems. So uh, these are staggering statistics, one in three with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Autism. Autism has increased 10,000% since 1975. One in 50 children now has autism, also related to aluminum. Morgellons, another disease that appears to be related directly to the spraying. There are also fibers in the patent I showed you earlier, polymer fibers. It appears that some people's systems react violently to these fibers trying to work their way out of the system. So Morgellons is becoming a, a very serious disease the medical industry has yet to, to recognize, we believe connected with the spraying as well. Synergistic effects of environmental and heavy metals. These metals are toxic in and of themselves. When you combine them, they become much more lethal. We've been given studies recently that indicate when mercury and aluminum are combined, toxicity increases as much as 10,000%. Bad equation. Let's add to the equation HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. This is a facility in Alaska. We believe there's 18 such facilities around the globe now. As the ionosphere is, is hit with these particles, as they ionize the whole atmosphere, make it more conductive, these signals can actually manipulate the jet stream. The data is quite clear on that. They, they cause a bulge in the atmosphere by heating it to tremendous temperatures, and that manipulates the jet stream. We believe, in fact, we are seeing huge jet stream manipulation. It's part of the reason why California is frying right now. As these clouds are hit with these signals, you see how they align like this. 
And this is indicative of them being exposed to these radio frequency signals. These are very powerful signals. So our bodies, as they become more conductive,